more importantly, he knew what he was talking about. All right, shalom, shalom, family. Um, sorry about the, the lighting. Um, sorry about the lighting, but uh, just wanted to come and make put this up video up for you guys so that don't believe or, you know, that, um, you know, just as a follow up to my last video, that these are illegal, these pyramid schemes. This, this video is going to show you that these pyramid schemes are illegal. So I just wanted to put this video up just to follow up my last video. If you haven't seen my last video, go check it out because I'm pretty much warning the uh, ministries and the fellowships, congregations, the camps, you know, um, about what's going on. You know, there's this uh, pyramid scheme business that's being introduced into fellowships and assemblies and people need to watch out for them, you know. Um, you know, and so there in the last video I, I made, I shared all my thoughts on it, brought, you know, spoke on it, you know, a little bit more in depth. Um, as far as coming from it, from a uh, spiritual point of view, um, what's going on and from, you know, trying to be righteous, you know, with the most high. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this video for you guys in here. Uh, just, you know, drop it, attach it, um, check it out, you know, watch it real quick. And, um, you know, just beware, you know, these things are illegal. So it's just going to break it down for you and show you kind of what's been going on since, um, you know, things that have been happening recently. So uh, with that being said, Shalom Mishpaka and, um, you know, check this out and take it, take it to heart, spread it and share it with those to warn as many people as possible, because it's not just about what's going on in assemblies, but it's also outside of assemblies as well. So just wanted to give this uh, video for you guys so you guys can see, um, you know, the, the fullness of everything so yeah as millions of americans lose their jobs due to the pandemic pyramid schemes and some multi-level marketing companies are using the crisis to profit preying on people desperate to make money fast before i continue let me quickly go over two terms that will help you better understand what's going on first pyramid scheme Usually framed as a business opportunity, these illegal get-rich-quick schemes ask you to pay money up front and recruit people to join the scheme so you can get your big payout. Some have products attached, like this one from Michael Scott. So, Phil recruited me to sell these cards, and now I am recruiting you. This sounds like a get-rich-quick scheme. Yes, thank you. You will get rich quick. We all will. Second, multi-level marketing companies, also known as MLMs or direct selling, they sell products through person-to-person -person sales without physical storefronts. But unlike pyramid schemes, many MLMs are actually legal because distributors make money from selling products and not just from recruiting people. They're known for flashy conferences and promo videos full of big promises. I want each and every one of you sitting in this arena to know you have exactly what it takes to build this business as big as you want to build it. Since the pandemic, there's been a sharp increase in recruitment activity from both pyramid schemes and multi-level marketing companies. And while some MLMs are legitimate business opportunities, pyramid schemes definitely are not. In times of financial crisis, we certainly do see a lot of work from home scams. If people are losing their jobs or are struggling financially, that's something that we see flourish. One pyramid scheme making the rounds on social media is called the Blessing Loom. It's unclear where it originated from, but anyone can start one. Here's how it works. To join a Blessing Loom or circle, you must pay $100 to the person in the middle of the circle. Once seven other people join the outside and pay $100 to the person at the center, that person gets $800 and leaves the circle. And then once it fills up, that person's gone, splits in half, you do it again, again. You do it again and again, recruit more people on the outside until you're the person in the middle. Get your $800 and walk away. If it sounds too good to be true, that's because it is. It may not look like a pyramid, but that's only because you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. The Better Business Bureau issued a scam alert for the scheme in May. For Marco Cavazzo, who lives in Texas, the blessing loom didn't look like a pyramid scheme. He joined one in March with the hopes of making a quick $800. And then it just died right at the split. And after that, like nobody brought in anybody at all. So it was like, oh, there goes my hundred bucks. 
As the pandemic unraveled in March, Leticia Mercado, a single mother, was quickly laid off from each of her three part-time jobs. Sí, me siento muy preocupada por lo que está pasando. Days later, she was convinced God heard her prayers. A man she briefly interacted with when she bought life insurance years ago contacted her about a job with an MLM via Facebook. Out of the blue. <coughs> The man told her she could make at least $80,000 this year if she worked hard. Convinced, Quesada paid an initial $300, took the test, attended a meeting, and that's when things didn't seem right. Empezaron a regañar a todos en una primera en la primera junta que tienen que traer gente. Leticia tiene que traer tres personas y si luego esas tres personas tienen que traer otras tres y otras tres y ya fue cuando me analicé. Oh, es una pirámide que hice. El... Mercado's seemingly perfectly timed opportunity is not uncommon. An administrator for the anti MLM Facebook group sounds like MLM but okay, which is dedicated to spotting sketchy MLMs says the group has seen a 22% spike in posts regarding questionable recruitment activity from MLM distributors, like posts touting the ability to earn four figures in five days or saying their business is pandemic proof. In April, things got bad enough the Federal Trade Commission had to send warning letters to 10 companies demanding they stop using the pandemic to make false product and earnings claims giving them 48 hours to respond with what they would do to stop the behavior. The FTC was referring to specific social media posts that said things like, Want to join me in drinking this product to combat the coronavirus? Contact me to learn how to be your own coronavirus superhero. And because of this company, her family's income isn't impacted by COVID-19. Learn how you can start working from home and earning $500 a month. The companies implicated in the FTC letters have since deleted some misleading posts and reminded distributors not to make unsubstantiated claims. Any claim you make has to be um, substantiated and cannot be false or deceptive or misleading. Remember this video? We found it on YouTube. Some anti-MLM advocates worry the claims in the video are deceptive and overselling the business opportunity. We reached out to Arbon, the company mentioned in the video, to get their response to criticism that the claims are deceptive. They said the video was posted several years ago by an independent consultant and that the company does not condone deceptive posts. They also said the video had been removed by the user. We reached out to the person in the video but did not hear back. If it's difficult to police what claims the 6.2 million people who participate in MLMs in the US are making on a public forum like YouTube, imagine how hard it is to monitor what they're saying via private messages. And you can bet many aren't disclosing that most people in MLMs don't make $500 a year, let alone $500 a month. So some firms release data um, in the form of what are called income disclosures. And so not all firms do and they're not required to but uh, they do put out income disclosures, some of them that show the outcomes of participants. Stacy Bosley is an economist at Hamline University. She studied pyramid schemes and MLMs extensively. And I don't know that I've seen one yet that shows anything other than a majority of people on balance after expenses losing money. In fact, 74% of people who join MLMs report making no money or losing money once they factor in how much they spend on inventory, according to a 2018 study from the AARP Foundation. And two-thirds of them said knowing what they know now, they wouldn't join an MLM again. It's sold often as sort of a secure, proven pathway to higher levels of income without any entry requirements, without any specific education or prior experience. And during times of crises, the promises these companies make seem to get bigger and shinier. Robert Fitzpatrick is the author of False Profits, a book about MLMs and pyramid schemes. And he runs PyramidSchemeAlert.org, the first consumer organization to confront the abuses and trickery of pyramid scheme perpetrators, according to the organization's website. But most of them, even whether they have products that are health related or not, argue that they have a business model that is perfect for this time in which we're all sequestered in our homes. Unfortunately, from what I've seen, a lot of the training suggests that you should really look to match the need of the moment with your opportunity. 
Uh, there's a lot of sort of saying, look, we can be the alternative economic engine. There's a degree of magical thinking to that. Their demand for some of these products shouldn't be exploding. That's not how economics work, right? Joe Mariano is the president and CEO of the Direct Selling Association, or DSA, the trade organization that represents more than 100 MLMs in the U.S. He says he's glad the FTC called out the companies it did, three of which are members of the DSA. I was disappointed that the FTC had to send such letters out, but frankly, not surprised. We've got literally millions of people who sell on a casual basis. You have a wide collection of people with varying degrees of experience, professionalism, enthusiasm, and even at some points, you might have small percentages of people who do the wrong thing. He says that's why the Better Business Bureau has a third-party self-regulatory council that scours the web for misleading claims. We have to be very clear that most people don't make a lot of money. This is a part-time activity for most people. It's supplemental income and just to help you pay the, the bills, you know. Mariano disputes the AARP survey that says most people are making no money or losing money with MLMs. He says the survey doesn't take into account all the people who join MLMs, perhaps for a discount on a product, but never with the intention to really sell. He says earnings are higher than the AARP survey suggests too. According to a 2018 survey from the DSA, direct sellers make an average of $5,702 a year, and 84% of sellers are doing it on a part-time basis, less than 30 hours a week. We did the math, and that averages out to about $3.78 an hour if you work 29 hours a week, and $7.31 an hour if you work 15 hours a week. For context, the federal minimum wage is $7.25. I asked Mariano whether recruiting recently laid off workers to take a job in which they're likely to make little money, no money, or lose money is predatory. It's not predatory. In fact, it's an opportunity. But in offering that opportunity, we have a special obligation to make sure that we're laying it out accurately. We applaud the FTC for what they've done. And the vast, vast majority of people are out there doing it correctly. But I'm never going to apologize, I tell you. I'm never going to apologize for an individual out there who's enthusiastic about the product that they're selling, as long as they're realistic. So at this point, you may be wondering, how do I tell if an opportunity is a pyramid scheme, a bad actor MLM, or a legitimate MLM? There are some things you can look out for. Number one, the recruiter is asking for money up front. It's an unsolicited invitation, and there are extravagant earnings promises. There's a big emphasis on recruitment, there's a low barrier of entry, and finally, the recruiter is playing on your emotions. And keep this in mind, these fraudulent offers won't end when the pandemic does. Scammers are excellent at following the headlines, whether it's the, the health crisis, the financial crisis, you know, the checks that are going to be coming out to some people, um, et cetera, et cetera. There will be a flourishing of scams related to each of those topics. People should be on high alert for that. How All right, family. So you've seen now how, you know, um, they showed you pretty much that this, you know, pyramid scheme based off basically off of just making money, like there's no product involved or nothing like that, how they're pretty much illegal. Right. Um, I just wanted to read this over for all those of you who are in assemblies and this is going around. I just want to read you something right now that you know that there may be illegal activity going on in your assembly, or in your, your congregation, your fellowship, your camp, whatever it be. You know, I want to read this from before the scriptures. Right. It says. Um, for a bishop. We're going to talk about the qualifications for a bishop because now some of y'all need to start looking at your leaders and scoping them out. Hey, check them fruits. What, is, what did you who should say? Uh, a tree shall be known by his fruit, right? We fruit inspectors. Uh, some people are going to be in a hot seat right now. But this is the qualifications for a bishop, you know, a steward, you know. Uh, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of Elohim, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, which is filthy money, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, 
holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound drop, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the, cre the creations are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know Elohim, but in the works they deny him, being abominable, and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So for those who are hearing Elohim, that just means God. But yes, our brothers and sisters, if this is going on in your assembly, this it needs to be stopped. I'll be 100% honest. If, if these illegal activities, you know, are going on in your assemblies, they need to be stopped because they are illegal where we are at here in this land. You know, you somebody might well maybe, you know, in another country or something, hey, maybe it's maybe this legal. Hey, well, I just know right here in, in, in the United States that is illegal. So it needs to be put to an end. And I'm really hoping that whoever initiated these things steps up and begins to take the necessary steps to correct themselves, um, make things right, return money. <laughs> Um, do what you need to do because yeah this is not what the faith is about don't bring that nonsense don't bring that nonsense up in here you definitely gonna be doing way more damage than good so um just wanted to say that miss Pocket and read that you know those that want to be bishops and leaders stewards of the most high yeah of our elohim of our god our creator yo check yourselves check yourselves because some of you right now may be slipping from your positions. All right, now I'm just going to read one more scripture for y'all um, that don't think that, oh, you know, well, we can just repent and, you know, we don't got to give back the money. It's not that necessary. I want to read one more scripture for y'all. It comes out of Luke chapter 19. I'm going to read. And, you, and Yahusha, start off starting at verse 1. And Yahusha or Yesiah Congo entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zakai, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Yahusha, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little, he was of little stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. And when Yahusha came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zakai, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zakai stood and said unto Adonai, Behold, Adonai, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him four folds. And Yahusha said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of Adam is come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
So it says that Zakai said, Behold, Adonai, half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Now, I know some of y'all probably heart dropped into your stomachs when you heard that. <laughs> now look, you may not have taken it by false accusation, right? You may just thought this was a good business plan and you're just going to go with the flow and all that. But at the end of the day, it was illegal. And, you know, you've taken it. So the least that you can do is give back what is due. You know, you want to go all, all the way and return four falls, that's on you. But at least give back what was taken. That's, that's where I'm going to leave those that have initiated these things and have been, you know, that are overseeing these things. Um, you know, I hope you're not in subject to somebody outside of your range for where you can't, you have no, um, you got no say over it, but, you know, if that's the case, I understand it looks like a lot of people just going to be chopping up their losses, but, um, you know, yeah, that's, this is not good. What is, what is trying to enter in or has entered in? to the body of Mashiach, this is not good. So I'm just gonna leave y'all with that. For those who can make those choices, uh, can take those steps, I would say begin to do so. Uh, you know. So that's it, Miss that's it, Miss Parker. That's it, family. You know, um, you know, that's that's all I got, you know, but I had to drop it on, you know, I had Fortunately, I know it's some difficult words to take in, but I had to, hey, had to be said. So, once again, may the most high, yeah, continue to guide you all. And I may talk about zombie, be with you in my good ways. Um, for those who are wondering why I'm saying talk on zombie, once again, it's the Bantu, it's the Bantu, as they say, over in the continent. But um, yeah, you know, I'll be doing some breakdowns on that later once I get some other videos out there. I got a lot, I got, I got a long list. So, but yeah, brothers and sisters, please start making things right. Start getting rid of this stuff out of your assemblies, out of your fellowships, your camps, congregations. Um, yeah, very important. So, shalom, shalom, CME, me, see me to all my brothers and sisters out there. May the most high be. More importantly, he knew what he was talking about.